I already mentioned it's going to be useful to remove punctuation and some of these useless words that we call stop words from our text before we start doing any analysis of it. Because words like the and we and me and stuff like that are really not adding any distinctive value to the text in terms of differentiating it from other texts. So the first thing we usually want to do in analyzing a text is strip out the punctuation. So we do that by doing from string import punctuation, which gives us this nice little string of punctuation right here. Then we can use a list comprehension, w for w in text one, if w not in punctuation. This is called a list comprehension in Python. So we basically, in other words, are iterating through our entire text, which is a list, and we're gonna filter out words that are in this punctuation list. And we're gonna exclude those and then we're going to reassign this new list to a variable called without punctuation. So now we have without punctuation. We've already deleted all that. Next thing we want to do is delete all the stop words. From nltk.corpus import stop words. That imports a whole collection of stop words, but the ones that we're interested in are the English ones. We have this in multiple languages. So we have to do sw equals stop words dot words. And then we pass in as an argument the language of our choice, which in this case is English. So here we printed the stop word list so you can see what it is. There's a bunch of words here. These are all stop words. And it's basically going to delete all of these from our text because we don't care about them. Words like in and out and on and off do not distinguish this text from other texts. So we can safely delete those if we want to analyze a document. So. We do exactly the same thing. We use list comprehension, and we're checking for words in this stop word list now. So I print the length of text before we took out anything. Then I printed the length of text without the punctuation, and then without the stop words. And you can see that we started out with a 260,000 word text, which without the punctuation got down to 221,000. And then when we took the stop words out, it got down to 122,000. So we reduced the size of our text by about 60% by stripping out all of the useless words and punctuation. Now we have a much smaller document to deal with, so we can analyze it much more quickly. And you'll see that as you have a very large corpus or a very large document that you're analyzing, some of these algorithms are going to run really slowly. So you want to chop out as much useless stuff as you can. It's going to speed up the run speed of your, t of your algorithms. So next, stemming and limitization. So this has some specific uses. Um, it's especially useful, I think, for search engines because you have a lot of different forms of words. So let's see how this works. First, we're going to use the Porter stemmer. There are several different stemmers that you can play with. I think there's a Stanford one. Uh, anyway, I put a link to the documentation here. You can look at the stemming docs and you can try out different ones. The Porter stemmer is a really good one that I've used before. And here I'm just going to create a, a list of words, is, are, bought, buys. And what we want to see is how it normalizes these words. It normalizes them by basically stripping off plural forms of the verb or past or present tense of a verb and tries to give you a single word instead of five different forms of a word. So we're, for each one of those, we're going to print out the word and then the stemmed version of the word. So is doesn't change, are doesn't change, bought doesn't change. Buys, it just strips off the S. Giving, it strips off the ING and puts an E on the end. So it, it gives us the uh, present tense, the verb. Jumps, again. And you can see how it's normalizing a lot of these words. Uh, not all of them. Look, some of them, it converts it to not a word. D-O-E instead of does. So that's one of the issues with stemming, is that the result you get may or may not be an actual word. Well, maybe that doesn't matter. And the limitizer does something very similar, except in theory, it always gives you a word back. So you'll see down here, though, for does, it always it still gives you do back, D-O-E. And most of the answers are basically the same. I think the stemmer does a better job than the limitizer, but uh, you can try them both out if you want. Also, the limitizer has multiple languages. There's a bunch of different languages that you can try out. The snowball stemmer supports all these different languages. So let's look at sentence and word tokenizers. So when you're given a block of text, maybe an entire document or a sentence, 
that is in text format. It's just a long string. And what we want to do is break that down to a list. And that is what a tokenizer does. It breaks this string down into lists and it determines where the breakpoints are. And that sounds easy, but it's actually a little hard to do sometimes. So the tokenizer does a really good job with that. So we'll do uh, nltk.tokenize, import, sent tokenize, and word tokenize. We're going to use those two libraries. So, hello, I am Joe. I like Python. 263.5 is a big number. Now, this is a little bit tricky. This is actually four sentences. Hello is a sentence in itself. I am Joe has an exclamation point instead of a period at the end. Um, I like Python's pretty straightforward sentence, but gee, look, this sentence starts with a number instead of a capital letter, and it has a decimal place right in the middle of the number, so that could trick our, our tokenizer. But what happens is it doesn't trick the tokenizer. You can see that the tokenizer, we do a sentence tokenization here, and the sentence tokenizer gives us back four sentences. So it's pretty smart. It's pretty hard to fool the sentence tokenizer. It does a nice job of breaking your text down into sentences. And then the word tokenizer, uh, we just picked a text string here, and it breaks down the entire text string into tokens, and it puts them into a list. So you can use the trick we showed up above using the list comprehension to get rid of the punctuation if you want. Next we'll look at parts of speech tagging. Sometimes this is just called tagging and it's abbreviated a lot of times POS. So to, um, to break the text down into its parts of speech like noun, pronoun, verb, adjective, whatever, you want to identify those parts of speech sometimes. That's an important part of natural language processing. So we have a sentence, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, which, by the way, is cool because it uses up every single letter in the alphabet. Anyway, we print, the, we print that sentence, and then we identify the part speech tagging with the default tag set. So we just pass in W as an argument. And what we get back is, gee, what the heck is DT? I don't know. What is JJ? Um, yeah, I don't know. In, in. So these are kind of codes for different parts of speech, and they're not very obvious to me. So you can use that if you want, but what I like better is the universal tag set because it's a little more descriptive. It, it gives you ADJ for adjective or noun for noun, verb for verb, and so on. There are a bunch of different tag sets in this library, so you can try different tag sets if you want.